I have been thinking about how to do a witch build since Halloween, and nothing has really grabbed me or stood out to me as something I would actually enjoy playing until now. So here's a very, very late witch build for your Halloween pleasure. I don't know. Without further ado, the Mind Witch. Now we're going to be going Hexblood. I was like, oh, it's so typical to go Hexblood for your witch build, but hey, turns out there's a reason. It matches the flavor perfectly. Not only does it give us Hex, which although is a common spell to take, actually fits this flavor way better than it normally does for most characters who take it, but it also lets us do a ton of other witchy things. It gives us the disguise self along with a proficiency in any skill you want which i'm going to take performance to help with the disguise self and then that's not even mentioning eerie token which is going to allow us to pull out one of our teeth and then use it to talk to people or to scry from it just so witchy had to take it here as far as our skills go i want 17 in charisma 16 in constitution 14 in dexterity 10 in wisdom and then dump the other two as i mentioned before performance is a skill i'm going to be looking for i also want deception these are going to be our two face skills since we are going to be a face on the witchy side of things i want to have nature and arcana as skills we have and then just to round us out some perception and stealth just to help us through our career at level one we're gonna go great old one warlock now the great old one gets some really great witchy spells just in general at this level we're getting tasha's hideous laughter as well as dissonant whispers i really love dissonant whispers for the witchiness of it and here's the point where i start talking about i want to use our material components so heavily in this build for example the hex spell takes an, a petrified eye of newt i want that to be part of casting the spell so instead of shooting this energy blast what i'm gonna do pull out a voodoo doll take a look at the character i am attaching this voodoo doll to. And then I'm going to have a dagger with a petrified eye of newt on its pommel. And then I'm going to have this dark energy go around the dagger and stab this voodoo doll. Hope that gives you guys a picture of what I'm doing with this build. I want to really get into the material components and the flavor of our spells. And the spell that stands out most to me from the rest of our first level spells is Charm Person. I think Charm Person is, an, is another really cool witchy spell, but that, that's it. Just it. Look at the spell listing though, which is the most witchy feeling to me and take it. As for cantrips, I want Eldritch Blast just because it's good. And Minor Illusion is something I really wanted with this build. I think Friends is another one we're going to want to pick up eventually. I level two, we get our invocation. At this level, that's going to be Agonizing Blast and Eldritch Mind. At level three, we get Pact of the Tome. I love Pact of the Tome. But instead of this being like a book, I'm going to have it be a voodoo doll and we carve our rituals on the voodoo doll. And I want to use the voodoo doll in combination with our material components to do our spells. But let's say we're doing Phantasmal Force. We have a, a bit of fleece so we can like take fleece and cover our voodoo doll's eyes in it to represent the illusion that we're casting on these people. So yeah, my tome is a voodoo doll. I'm going to be grabbing some cantrips and one of which is going to be some DMs aren't going to allow it, which is in Code Thoughts. It comes from Ravnica, which is the reason why people might not allow it, but it's it's a, it's a cantrip. Who cares? And it's really, really cool with this build. So what in Code Thoughts does, I think Harry Potter, when Dumbledore is pulling out his memories and putting them in the pensive, we do that. We pull out me memories and make them physical. But what's really cool is if we're casting detect thoughts on somebody and we read one of their thoughts, we can then cast this cantrip and pull out their memory and make it physical so we can share it with people. So it'd be awesome for interrogating because we can gather information from people and then make it physical so we can get actual physical evidence of mental communication. I just think that's so dope, which I need to bring up that by being a great old one warlock, we get the ability to talk into people's heads and they understand us so long as they understand the language. In combination of detect thoughts, which we're getting at third level, we can have mental communication where they can't not talk to us. We can talk to them, we hear their responses, they come back to us, we can pull out the responses and make it physical. We just have this mental interrogation ability that's just really, really unique and really, really cool. Other cantrips I'm looking at picking up is Druidcraft, because out of the flavor cantrips, I think it's the most witchy. And Mind Sliver. Mind Sliver is a great option when we are facing someone with an incredibly high AC where Eldritch Blast is less effective. This targets intelligence saves. But also, if we're in melee combat, we can still use this without having disadvantage. And so that way, we don't have to have a weapon necessarily out at any given time. We can have our Voodoo Doll and our material components out on the usual and then have this be our melee option. At this level, I'll also be swapping out Eldritch Mind for our Book of Ancient Secrets. Ritual casting is such a big part about being a witch that I want it to be so core to this character. I want to get really into what we're doing for these rituals. We got to start out with finding familiar because every witch has a familiar. I'm thinking, you know, the typical witch stuff, black cat or a rat or whatever. And then I think the second one I'd pick up is actually speak with animals. Again, just because of the witchiness of it. I want to speak to rats and ask them to do things for me, all that kind of stuff. And here's a note for this level. Warlocks have a collection of rituals, not the best, but I will be taking those ritual spells just to carve it onto my voodoo doll and then to trade them out next level. And I think collecting rituals is going to be a big portion of this character's downtime. Again, the great old one spells, detect thoughts and phantasmal force are both so cool with the witch. I think phantasmal force's flavor with the witch is just amazing. I, I'm just really excited about the flavor profile of this character. Other second level spells to consider, and there's quite a few at this level that I feel like are quite witchy, are Flock of Familiars, Whole Person, Invisibility, Mirror Image, Misty Step, and Suggestion. This is just a great level for spells for us. At level four, we get to choose a Charisma Halfie, and we get a pick of a litter here. A Touched is great, Shadow Touched is great, Actor is great. But for me, man, I gotta go Actor. Actor is just so fun with the great old one, Warlock. Why? Well, it has synergy with our, with our Awakened Mind feature, so we can talk into people's heads using other people's voices. We can use their voice to talk in their head. 
We can use detect thoughts so we hear their responses to themselves and we can make them have a whole conversation with themselves. And at any point we get any incriminating evidence, we can rip it out using encode thoughts. How sick is that? But it also has synergy with disguise self. Our disguises now are a lot more difficult to see through and we can be a lot more people, which again, for a witch, it's really fun to do the deceiving and fooling people. How cool is this? At level five, welcome back Eldritch Mind. We missed you for those two levels. Great old one gives us clairvoyance and sending at this level. I'm particularly excited for clairvoyance. It does feel very witchy though, to be fair, with fine familiar, we can get a lot of what clairvoyance gives us, but not everything. Clairvoyance is still good. Other spells I like at this level are enemies abound, gaseous form, and fear. I'm sure that among the summons that we get, some of them would feel quite nice here. At level six, we get another great old one feature. It's nothing to write home about. It's okay. Nothing special. Level seven, I love Sculptor of Flesh as our invocation here, both because it's crazy powerful, but more importantly, because the flavor for the witch is just so right. And so its material component is the cocoon of a caterpillar. So we have that cocoon of a caterpillar and we take it and we mush it together with our voodoo doll and it and it becomes kind of clay-like and then we can morph our voodoo doll to be a giant ape and so we transform whoever we attach our voodoo doll to into a giant ape how cool is that i just like the imagery of it so we're basically just a great old one warlock we do the normal warlock combat stuff use our fight winning spell eldritch blast is good you know the drill but out of combat i think the great old ones out of combat utility is some of the most unique and awesome out of combat utility and we're still getting that here even though we're not hard committing to it like some builds it's still something we minor in and can and enjoy a lot throughout a campaign but clearly the standout thing we're doing here is the flavor pro Profile. I have really struggled building a witch, and this is the first thing that feels so much like a witch to me. I'm really excited to play it, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But other than that, I hope you have yourselves a lovely day, and I'll catch you on the next one. See you then.